Yo, what's good, y'all? We're back with a different topic today, a different discussion, talking about agendas in One Piece and how Edichiro Oda is killing them all off, chapter after chapter after chapter. Um, it's been a, a pretty good stint of chapters, except for 1057. I thought that chapter was absolute uh, booty meat. Um, I did not like that chapter. Uh, y'all know my feelings, y'all. Y'all know my review, but. Uh, yeah, he's been killing it. Aside from that chapter, the uh, the agendas though <laughs> that he's been killing off <laughs> have been pretty funny. It's been a lot of marine agendas that have been dying, been going the way of the buffalo. And honestly, we should have figured this stuff out going into Marine Ford, right? Uh, and yes, they were basing what they knew about Whitebeard off of his prime, off of his past, and so that's why Sengoku was really worried about uh, and weary. Of Whitebeard jumping off of his uh, ship because I honestly and obviously when, when Whitebeard got down there on the ground I mean even before he jumped off the ship this guy took out John Giant negative um, John Giant couldn't do anything to him um, he was you know beating people back left and right and we should have known that that was the case that, that the Marines couldn't really equal a Yonko crew until Whitebeard had his heart attack uh, when he had his heart attack, that was the very first time Sakazuki Akainu landed uh, his first magma punch on him, punched the first hole in him, you know, and obviously that was Oda subtly telling us right then and there that marine admirals do not equal Yonko. Uh, what we saw was an old cancer patient heart attack having <laughs> a white beard in marine for it. Uh, this was not the white beard who fought uh, Roger in the in the olden flashback you know when we first saw that they weren't touching and they were clearing you know they were shaking the whole ocean we even saw in the olden flashback that whitebeard's mere rage was causing the sea to you know uh, to like shake it was basically doing the same thing we saw him do when he used uh, as people have dubbed it uh heaven and earth when he literally grabbed the atmosphere and shifted it but that was just his mere anger in his prime. And so we were seeing then and there that, you know, Oda was definitely telling us that Yonko are over Marines. Let, let's use the best example of Shanks <laughs> scaring off Green Bull when he's like 500 miles away off the coast of Wano. Um, Green Bull was paralyzed, it couldn't move, this guy was screaming just from Shanks exerting his Conqueror's hockey. You know, and and only the weak-willed are affected by Conqueror's hockey. That means that besides all of his bluster and his uh, conviction about the world government and the Ten Ryubito, uh, Green Bull just is not that guy. Um, he was shook, he was shaken, and he was paralyzed by what Shanks did. Um, you know, and so that right there, Oda showing us again that no, Marine Admirals do not equal Yonko. Let's look at Hawkeye Mihawk. Um, <laughs> this guy was known as the naval or marine chaser but this guy was literally paid by the royal government to stop hunting marines and then that's why we saw him on his introduction back on the east blue how he was chasing uh, why am I blanking on his name uh, Don Krieg in the Baratier arc um, you know and as he said he's just doing it for fun he was bored uh, this guy resides in the muggy kingdom uh, even before he joined Cross Guild, this guy was surrounded by marine ships, and we have, and we're left to believe that this guy took out all those marine ships on his way, on, on his making his way to Empty Bluffs Island, joining Crocodile and Buggy, uh, f formally uh, forming Cross Guild. So you know, uh, and then we have Sakazuki saying, "Oh, we're like stretched thin, and we can't send a bunch of marines." But it's like, okay. Why are y'all sending Marines after Mihawk when y'all know that in the past this guy was a menace? And then you give him a 3.59 billion berry bounty. Like, <laughs> like, you need a Yonko, I mean, you need an Admiral for this guy. But you're sending mere Marines, maybe Captains and Vice Admirals. So it's like, no. This guy is on a whole different tier. This guy is on a whole different level. Uh, this guy is Yonko level. This guy has greater short skill than Shanks. You know, I even put it in the video, Stephen Paul from 2017, talking about how when Oda says skill, he means strength. So he's literally telling us that 
Mihawk is stronger than Shanks. Physically, now, now that doesn't mean that in the hockey department, Shanks is probably more than likely as stronger in, in different forms of, of hockey than what Mihawk is. And so I'll definitely give Shanks that uh, as far. I mean, he has the greatest uh, conqueror's hockey feat we've seen in the series to date. Like, that's no cap. He has the best conqueror's hockey feat. And so, um, yeah. And so I, I think obviously in physicality, I would put Mihawk over him. He has both arms. That is one of the things Mihawk told Shanks when, when, when we very first saw Mihawk come to the island to show Shanks Luffy's bounty. He was like, I'm not... Yeah, yeah. he said, I have no in interest in fighting one-armed has -beens. You know, and so uh, even though Oda says uh, Shanks has gotten stronger yeah, even after losing his arm, and we know that now in that East Blue flashback in the very first chapter, Shanks' bounty was over a billion already. It was a billion, 48 million. So... It's pretty cool seeing that, but yeah, I mean, Oda's been, you know, killing the agendas. And as I said, we should have known this, speaking of Yonko and Admirals, because Garp said that they couldn't take on two legends at the same time, meaning Silver's Rayleigh and Whitebeard. We should have known that. We should have known that the, I mean, yeah, people will, pe people like to like point out, well, after Whitebeard went down, you know, the Whitebeard Pirates, you know, were getting, you know, neg diff to no diff. And it was like, well, they lost their captain. Like, <laughs> I mean, you, if you lose the organizer of your army, of course, morale is going to fall. Yeah. But again, if this was a prime Whitebeard who showed up to Marineford, in my opinion, he's soloing Marineford. There is no one there who can stop him. This guy was a contemporary of, 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 uh, of Goldie Roger. The same guy... Who helped, or in my opinion, that I believe, solely took out Rags de Zebek. I have no reason to believe Sengoku or the royal government because they lie all the time. They lied about Luffy uh, when they said that it was Smoker who beat Crocodile when we all know who was Luffy. They covered up the fact that Luffy beat Echo Moria, but they did give him a, a 200 uh, million berry bounty increase from 100 million to 300. Uh, going into Sabote. And so, these guys just lie all the time. The uh, the agendas, uh, you know, again, that I'm, that I'm, that I'm loving, that Oda is just putting a pin on it, that, you know, no, this is how it really works. You know, even in the past, he said that Crocodile was probably too soon, because we have to remember that the first five years, Oda thought, Oda only thought, I mean, not thought, but he was only given a contract with Shonen Jump for five years. And so Alabasta from 97 to 2002 was going to be his final arc until they gave him that massive extension to continue the story. And so Alabasta was going to be the last arc of the manga. And so uh, even there he was like, I probably had Crocodile in here too early. That's why he had such a great showing at, at Marine Ford. He, he, he clashed with Mihawk. Clash with Jimbe, clash with um, Jozu, went against Don Quixote, you know. So, you know, the the guy was studly, right? And so, man, you know, uh, and obviously now he reflects on this bounty as 1.99 uh, billion, right? And so, uh, Oda has just been on a streak. I cannot wait for this new ch chapter to go ahead and drop. Obviously, spoilers are out at this point, so be careful in the comments section. But yeah, man, uh, I'm, I'm just loving that the agenda piece, <laughs> you know, the certain agendas are being crushed, um, you know. And, and Oda's obviously having fun at the same time. You see Zoro and Sanji's bounty and Jinbei's bounty, you know, <laughs> Sanji being called Mr. Four, even though his name, Sanji, literally means three. It's just funny, man. Uh, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm excited again. We're getting into a new island. We're setting sail. But yeah, man, the uh, the agendas that Oda is mid diffing or low diffing right now is <laughs> just great to see. But that'll be all for me. This video should be up in the next either today or by Wednesday. So I'll see you guys soon.